Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this tutorial, we want to be talking about some basic 2D water here. Now, you can see my character can run left and right. I can jump up and down, and I can climb on top of things. Now, when I jump to the water, our character is going to slow right down. We'll have a couple effects, and we should transition into this swimming state here. So I come, I jump in. You can see I slow right down. I got some random bubbles. I can swim left and right, and when I hit my jump key, I can kind of jump out of the water and one thing I want you to notice is the jump height when I'm on ground is a lot higher than when I'm in the water. So this is actually what we're going to be working on today. So let's close this finished project and actually I'll just minimize it in the case we have to come back to it and let's work on the unfinished product that we have here. So a couple things, we'll just quickly go through this project and I'll just kind of close everything that I have open here. Uh, we have the basic tile sets, the character animations. We also have a solid sprite for, sorry, a sprite for solids, a sprite for water, a couple effects. Now, let's take a look at the solid. This is a basic one. You can see that it's not even visible when we do it, as well as the object water is not visible and there's no events or anything special in it. So these are basically just placeholders. If I take a look at the rooms, you can see that we have our tile sets right here, these three. And if I get rid of them, you can see that we are left with our solids. So we have the object solids, which are these pink-ish red things. And then we have our water itself. And this just signifies that our player is within the water. All right, so I'll turn those back all on. And let's actually open up our object character. This is where we're going to be doing all of the work. Now, we've already covered pretty much everything that this character is using this is your basic platformer if i run this game right now we'll have our left and right movement we can jump up and down climb on top of things like this and if i jump to the water perfect i'm all the way at the bottom i sink like a rock so let's actually make this work right now so let's close this and let's create a couple new variables you can see that we have a gravity normal of one and then we have a gravity variable which just basically equals one what i want to do is when the player splashes or sorry i should say when the player is in that water area i want to use a different gravity because i don't want gravity to be pushing the player down i'm actually going to have gravity at zero you could put it to something like negative 0.2 or something and that would actually push the player up so we'll say gravity underscore swimming equals zero and the next thing I want to do is I need to be able to tell when our player has jumped into the water. And then the reason I want to be able to tell that is because I want that effect to happen, have that splash effect. Now I'm going to create a variable that will just determine whether or not we have just jumped into the water. And we can actually use this when we are trying to swim upwards. So let's create a boolean called are we in water and let's set it to false. And the other thing I want you to pay attention to is these two little triangles. If we mouse over, it just says this variable is only referenced once. So that's just something new in the Game Maker IDE. And this just, it kind of helps you clean up your code. I know I'm going to be using these variables later on, so I'm going to ignore those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the step event. And you can see that this is, once again, the basic platformer stuff. We have some horizontal movement. We have the horizontal collision. We have an empty region for a water check. And then we have, a, I labeled this as gravity, but this is basically a vertical movement here. And then we have our animation state machine. So we're gonna be working on the water itself. So let's make sure that we are on the water region. And the first thing I need to do is I need to tell whether or not we are actually inside the water. So we can do that with a simple if place meeting at our character's X and Y position, and we're gonna check for object underscore water. So this just basically means that we are within, let me open up this room, that we are within this blue item here, so I should say this object water. So our player is within this object water. So if I were to move this up here, our player would have to be up here in order for that if statement to happen. So let me I kind of click that button there. Okay, so we know that we are inside the object water. What do we want to happen? Well, I said I want to change the gravity that we're going to be using. So it's no longer going to be one. I'm going to set it to zero. So I'll just say gravity equals gravity underscore swimming. And if we are not in water, well, then I want to reset 
not really reset, I wanna switch the gravity back. So I'll take the statement that we have here and I will say the gravity equals gravity underscore normal. So this is going to switch gravity zero and then when we are not inside the water, it will switch it back to one in my case. Now the other thing I wanna do is I wanna slow our fall when we are inside the water. And I wanna slow it to the swimming gravity. So I could say the vertical speed equals the lerp. And what lerp allows us to do is take two variables, say vertical speed and the variable, or should say the number zero. And over time, we are gonna change this vertical speed to equal zero, but every frame, we're just gonna do it 0 0.01. So that will give us a nice kind of ramp effect to slow our character down. Now with the state machine that I have, I actually won't do anything up, I'll just say state. So we'll come back to that. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna know if we are just falling into the water. So if you remember, when we had our character jump into the water, we had a splash effect here. We slowed right down and then we had some bubbles come up. So whenever we jump right into the water, we have that nice splash effect. So I'm gonna make sure that we have that as well. So what we need to do is we can use that variable that we are talking about, which is, are we in water? So we can easily say is, if are we in water equals false, or we could say if not are we in water, it really depends on your programming style. So if we are not in the water, then this is our first time entering. So what I wanna do is I wanna change my vertical speed to be equal to vertical speed divided by four. And since we're doing a little bit of shorthand up here, we could also say vertical speed divided by equals four, which is the exact same thing as we had. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our current speed and divide it by four, which will slow us right down. The next thing I wanna do is create an, say instance, create layer at the X and Y position of our player. Using the effects layer, I'm gonna create an object effect splash and this effect right here all we have is an animation end when the animation ends we just destroy that instance so nothing special about that so we know that we've come in we have at least we're inside the water we just jumped into the water if we just jumped into the water we slow ourselves right down create that splash effect and now we have to say that we are indeed sitting in the water so if we run this, let's see, we should be able to jump in. We won't change states, but we should slow right down here. So let's jump from a high distance. And you can see that we've kind of slowed right down. This looks pretty funny that we're just walking. And I can't jump or swim up. And that's just because we haven't programmed that yet. Now, the other thing is I don't have any bubbles. So let's actually add that in. So if we are with inside this water here, we could say if random range between zero and 100 is less, uh, let's say less or equal one. So it gives a 1% chance of saying instance, create layer, and I'm just gonna create on the effects layer an object underscore bubble, sorry, effect bubble. And just like the splash, all we have really is when, um, when the image scale, sorry, when the time to live is zero or the image scale is less or equal to zero, then we just destroy the image and we're just giving it a random plus minus to give it that kind of squiggly up and down. Now, the next thing we know here, so the, we're done with this here. So if we actually run this, this is gonna work, it's gonna slow us down and we'll create that splash effect and randomly create those bubbles as you can see here. Now we don't have the state in there, but that's pretty simple to do and we will come back to that. Now, if we are not within that water, we know that our gravity has to be normal and we should say that we are not in the water. So we'll set, uh, are we in water equals false. And now we would have to do some state machines. And actually let's let's finish that because this is pretty easy to do. Now in the script that I pretty much always include, I have a couple states here. I have idle, run, jump, fall, land, and swim. So I know when I'm in the water, I wanna use the swim event. So I'll come up here and I will say my state equals character states dot swim. And if you're not familiar with the uh, animation states, we have a couple of videos or I have a couple of videos that you can check out.
All right, so when we are swimming, we should switch to the state event of swim. And if we come back, we should see this. And now I'm swimming, perfect. Now, the next thing I wanna do is if we are not in the water, you can actually, if I run this game, you can see that when I jump, I don't really have any state here, don't have one for jumping, and I don't have one for falling. So we're gonna fix that. So I could say if we are not in the water, which is this else statement, I wanna say if our vertical speed is less than zero, if our vertical speed is less than zero, then our character state is gonna be jump. Now, the reason I'm saying less than zero is because inside the room, if you take a look at this second number here, if I move up, which is taking away numbers, that means that our character would be jumping. So if our character jumped, he would be moving up like that. If our character is falling, the numbers here at the bottom are going up. So that would be above zero. So our vertical state is either gonna be minus something or plus something. So if our vertical state is less than zero, then we know we're jumping. Otherwise, if our vertical, I should say vertical speed, not vertical state, is bigger than zero, then our state is gonna be the fall state. So if we run this, we should pretty much almost be done here. So I can run, and if I jump up, I should get that animation. And I do, and if I jump high enough, we should see a fall effect. It's a little hard to see, but it should be in there. Looks like it is. Okay, so the other thing is when we jump to the water, we can splash. However, I don't know if you can hear that, I'm hitting my jump key. My character isn't moving up. And that's because in the normal platformer code that pretty much we always use here, we have a check right here to see if we are on the ground. If we are on the ground, if we've hit the jump key, then let our player jump. Well, we're not on the ground because we're swimming. So we could say else. We would actually, we could say else if, but let's make it kind of the long form. So we could say if are we in water, so if we are in the water, then we could say if our keyboard has been pressed, then add the jump height, except what I wanna do is say divide it by 1.2. So we can't have that full jump height, we'll have only a little bit of jump height. Now if I come back and I jump to the water, I can see that I can swim again, and if I hit my space key, you can see that I can jump. However, I can't really jump the same height as I could on land. So what we have here is what I showed you at the very beginning, the finished product. I would like to thank you for watching this video tutorial. You can find the unfinished source code in the description below. Also, please like and share this video with your friends. I would also like to thank my Patreon supporters, such as Jean, Paul, and Wayne. It's really uplifting to get the support. I'm also going to try and make these videos a little more frequent now that work has slowed down a little bit, so stay tuned. And if you'd like to suggest a topic, please do so in the comments below or on the Patreon page found in the description. Once again, thanks so much.